and namaste and welcome to 20 flame profile 11 welcome to charge of heart so this is our second day and yesterday we have completed genesis verse 19 and we will be continuing from this so i've been very excited to start and we jump into it because i was like this week waiting for the time to read so yeah finally that time is now the man called his wife's name eve because she was the mother of all living and lord god made adam and for his wife garments of skins and clothed them then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us in knowing good and evil. Now lest he reach out his hand and take also of tree and eat and live forever. Therefore, Lord God sent, them, sent him out from Garden of Eden to walk the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man and at east of the Garden of Eden, he placed the cherubim and a flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. So after the phase, when finally Adam and Eve had come to a state of awakening, come to a state of realization of their true self, come to a state of understanding their God as self. There were cherubim and sword placed in between them and the garden. So in another way how we can see it as is there is illusions. There are illusions around us and we are covered by illusions. And our reality and the false timeline reality of illusions are separated. Now, the delusion reality that we are separated from, we are separated from there through our modes of work, our areas of interest. So, a cherubim can be the psychic realm, the sword is the realm which is doing the day to day activities. So, there is the sword, then there is the cherubim, and then there is this world of knowing of oneness. And another way of also exploring the apple could really be intoxication or any particular knowledge or anything, any scroll, any psychedelic or anything which is an intoxicant which externally works as a means, a way of awakening, way of leading to spiritual awakening many spiritual teachers new and spiritual teachers not of our country but of countries outside where they get it in availability talk about something called ayahuasca ayahuasca experience that's like very popular in very many places and it is considered as a spiritual drug and it is said that once a person consumes ayahuasca it is supposedly found in some forest I don't know where, maybe in Peru, the sound in some forest which you consume, you awaken to your divinity and experience. And many spiritual teachers and many bloggers, even if you search on YouTube, have shared their experience about it. So that is like an awakening process. It is like something that you get provision for and you awaken. So a serpent can be considered as a person who's always in that trip and going through that phase and just offers to you that and then you suddenly awaken and your life changes. Similarly, Apple can also be considered as somebody who just gives you a spark of knowledge and you've just awakened and you've just enlightened. And after that, you just go around in the phase of soul searching and you'll not really go back there. There are guards in your life to go back really there. But you are, you finally found your oneness with your divine oneness with your lover. 
So this in the process of life can be interlinked in this method at this point of time in context to what we are experiencing in this very moment in our life for the collective. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with help of Lord. And again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain was a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of fruit of ground and Abel was brought of the firstborn of the flock of their fat portions. And Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry and his face fell. Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why has your face fallen? If you do well, Will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. It is desire for you, but you must rule over it. So now introducing that process of life and we're always in that stage where we seek validation on the outside. We're always in a phase where we look for validation on the outside. The Cain and Abel story later um, goes on deeper ground where they will not go to that right now we'll be going to that in the process but the Cain and Abel story the conflict which we see here is the root the source of the conflict where Cain is doing a particular type of work and Abel is doing a particular type of work so Abel's work is supposed to raise the collective vibration and Cain's work is to do cattle rearing. So now after doing the work, when Abel is really appreciated by the father, Cain is really intimidated by it. And this intimidation is something that we see in our own day-to-day -day life, in our life, in our situations, in our work life and everywhere. We just keep on Seeing things like that where there is somebody else who's just sad by seeing what is going on in your life and is upset about the success you're experiencing. But when a person is experiencing success, when a person is experiencing joy, when a person is, regard, is really being praised from the heaven, the person is being praised from the heaven, the person is cultivating those praises from heaven because that person has done the work to deserve that. So it's clearly the, from the very beginning it has been shown that whenever we feel jealousy, whenever we feel we have worked on the energy of humiliation, shame, now we are coming to the energy of jealousy becoming layer by layer to emotions. So right now we are working on jealousy. So whenever we are experiencing jealousy, the first lesson here we can <clears throat> draw the wisdom here is that jealousy is not real. So if somebody is doing great and you see that and you are getting intimidated by it and you're like, oh my God, they are doing well. Why am I not getting that praise? Instead of being intimidated by it the point is to think that what is it that i would do and i would do so well the well the way they are doing that work that when i do that i will be praised but if you try to do something that you're not good at and you're not made for and then you experience that somebody else who's made for it is experiencing praise for that and then you get intimidated by it well, that is when jealousy come, trigger come, and that is where again we go back to what we have known all this while, that we're all one. But again, we are all one, we've forgotten here because we have tasted that apple. So we know that emotion. 
apple is also temptation apple is also emotion apple is also all the sense of experiencing one of those emotions because for example a young girl is going to school and she really is triggered to go ahead and have some food which is not even good for her health and her mother has told her that you will not have it promise me that's bad thing to have that it's like against god to have that then her friend tells her that no you definitely can have that it's completely cool to have that no big deal but then that girl is consuming it that girl will be thinking twice that should i be having to say ice cream maybe her mom asks her not to have ice cream and maybe while she's consuming it she will think is it right in god to have it so whenever that girl is thinking that a pattern will come into play which is in her conscience whenever conscience starts starts coming in place you understand there's something called conscience the essence of the presence of conscience you understand there's something greater conscience and knowing something greater conscience we start to do things to be at par with the conscience and when you are trying to be at par with the conscience that is where the conscience gives birth to very many knowledge very many understanding very many ideology very many acknowledgement of feeling emotions and thereby the conscience impacts the consciousness but here they have forgotten they have forgotten so they are connected to the emotions of life so in those emotions of life came spoke to abel his brother and when they were in the field came rose up against his brother and abel killed him abra and then the lord came and said to cain where is abel your brother he said i have not know am i my brother's keeper the lord said what have you done the voice of your brother's the voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground and now you're cursed from the ground which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand when you walk the ground it shall no longer yield you its strength you shall be fugitive and wanderer on earth cain said to lord my punishment is greater than i can bear behold you have driven me today away from the ground and from your face i shall be hidden i shall be fugitive and wanderer on the earth whoever finds me will kill me then the lord said to him not so if any one kills cain vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold and the lord shall lord put a mark on cain lest any who found him should attack him then came to went away from the presence of lord and settled in the land of nod east of uh, nod east of eden he knew his wife and she conceived and bore enoch when he built a city he called the name of the city of the name of the son enoch and to enoch was the lord irad and irad fathered mehjuel and mehjuel fathered methusel and methusel fathered lamech and lamech took two wives the name of the one was ada and name of the other zila ada bore jabal and he was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock his brother's name was jubal he was the father of those who play and lie and pipe zila also bore tubal and uh, cain he was the forger of all instruments and of bronze and iron the sister of tubal cain and nama so uh, tubal cain was nama okay so the point is that the lion king could not take 
uh, pressure that okay my brother is doing so well and finally killed able pain is that constant trigger in us for suffering which fears the ability in us and when the ability in you has died and the ability in you is dead you will be lost you will be wandering on earth you will be doing various things and various stuff and the energy of cain as we see the way the family lineage the tree of cain goes ultimately what uh, when his uh, child is born having to name the city and here he is giving that love to the child that he hasn't really got from his father so the power he was seeking from his father that power he is giving to his son and is uh, and that process when they are growing and processing finally after a not rule after a few of the decades what he comes in is polygamy and we see the polygamy starting from this phase where after enoch the enoch has two sons and after the two sons there comes in the phase where a man has two wives and this is coming in the two wives process is coming in so if we consider that cain is the caning process of caning with that caning we kill our ability and with our ability being killed we give birth to ego not and when we give birth to ego ego father then gives birth to various other illusions those various other illusions lead to various more illusions and those various more illusions lead to various more illusions and those illusions lead to pipelines and layers and stuff and streams and here and there every stream is going here and there and that's where the streaming is happening and with those streaming and everything industrialization is coming in because then finally there is instruments of bronze and iron where tubal came he bought the forger of all instruments of bronze and iron this is where industrialization working with metals and everything is coming in so whenever there was survival fear there it started with our ability in god and along with that there was triggers from the survival instinct and the survival instinct has a massive fight with the part of us which is our ability and strength in god our creativity not our ego but our creative artistic infinite possibilities our infinite possibilities are shattered once our infinite possibilities are shattered we get into that streams and upstreams of life and give birth to our ego which gives birth to various more stuff and then there are streams and upstreams and a lot of confusion and wandering happening in that process Lamet said to his wives Ada and Zila hear my voice you wives of Lamet listen to what i say i have killed a man for wounding me a young man for striking me if cain's revenge is sevenfold then lamet is 77 fold so cain has been really hurt when cain kills the ability and without ability cain is very hard Cain and ability together, discipline and love, discipline and creation, or say discipline and what can we say is the opposite of discipline? Discipline is freedom. So discipline and freedom. So I can say ability is freedom and Cain is discipline. So discipline is really heavy on freedom, and freedom wants to fly. and now the discipline completely curbs over freedom there is no freedom anymore 
without that freedom disciplines get really really strict without the freedom with discipline strictness there is no peace there is no energy where we can be really really flow we can really really just be we're not being able to just be because there's a lot of discipline there's a lot of disciplinary actions taking place again going to the time of hitler there was a lot of discipline in that a lot of rule control this is when the rulers are also coming in there's a lot of discipline so with all those discipline whenever you try to even keep a child with a lot of discipline the child will literally want to do the thing that the you that you are asking the child not to do because the child literally feels trapped so when you literally put something in too much of discipline yes discipline is necessary but when we start to put things in too much of discipline too much of discipline too much of discipline what happens and causes is claustrophobia and that claustrophobia gives birth to like okay i have to be more disciplined i have to be more disciplined and that discipline anger gives birth to raging ego so it said like okay 74 now you get 74 so you listen to wives like you will do listen two of you are mine that attitude egos is coming in in discipline is because discipline has forgotten the taste of freedom again discipline has tasted too much of freedom we can say because here discipline has somewhere tasted freedom and when discipline has tasted freedom discipline has tapped into the fullest ability of it and it's living its fullest ability and gaining it so that can be another way of understanding this and adam knew his wife again and she for his son and called him set and for she said god has appointed for me another offspring in set of abel for cain killed abel the set also was a son was born and he called them enosh at that time people began to call upon the name of the lord so this can also be taken in a way where you've been through a karmic situation and you've been through a really hard time and really blistering time and pathetic time and after that karmic energy maybe your karmic gets very vengeful like full of vengeance like oh you couldn't be mine i'm going to ruin this for you or you've been through that vengeance too where you literally wanted to ruin it for your karmic because how can you find joy how can you find glory when i haven't found that happiness in my life and when that is going on at another end where your karmic is angry and all of those vengeance is coming in at another end you found your oneness with your twin flame and you're living a life and going beyond and an arch and an arch has a difference i really somehow want to know the meaning of the word enosh because i know enosh relates to ego okay so a notch can be also said that a notch is dedicated so a notch is again dedication discipline and a notch is mere mortal man born of man just a human mere mortal so enosh with the mere mortal a simplicity and in that state with the enosh simplicity with mere mortal energy and you have imbibed in your mere mortal energy in that mortal essence you start to again call in that energy of god with that discipline energy again 
with that extreme dedication energy which was in the time of babylon which was in the time of enoch in that time of enoch there is like too much of discipline too much of discipline too much of dedication this is also the time when religious sect laws it um, lost its importance because there was a lot of uh, triggers that religious leaders gave to us like there was a lot of control that was being made by religious leaders a lot of control a lot of disciplinary action that they were bringing in that cannot can also be said as a notch period and with the enosh energy it's like a more of humanitarian energy more of lively energy or more of present reality energy with that enosh reality coming in life started to be more human life started to be more mortal life started to be more literal and we once again started to pray to god and believe in god because the extreme control was not there in this kingdom adam's descendant to noah this is the book of generations of adam when god created man he made him in likeness of god male and female he created them and he blessed them and named them man when they were created and adam had lived one thirty years he fathered a son in his own life likeness after his image and named him set before he proceeds with the life span of one thirty years of adam also takes away the fear of death because often at times we have the fear that we shall live temporarily and that's very scary to the ego and similarly we live long that's this so so thing that's the happening we live we live we are here temporarily but we shall live we have a long life and we can really have a human life can have a long life a human can really have a long life up to 150 years and this is also a message that human span can be up to 130 years he fathered a son in his own likeness after his image and named him set the days of adam after he fathered set were 800 years and he had other son and daughters thus all the days of adam lived were 930 years and he died so this again talks about that maybe the human body can live till 130 years but there are very many lifetimes and there is no timeline literally in one lifetime you can live 1000 years 2 million years 2 million decade life years you can just live that in one lifetime in a day because perhaps in one lifetime doing so many things experiencing so many things you can perhaps live many years and perhaps in one lifetime despite of doing many things you can just live a day because you're not happy with you being dead so if you live a life happily and even if it's a week you feel like oh my god it feels like it seems like it's been a month if you're really happy but if you're really sad even a day feels like oh my god this is such a long day and that is what the introduction again is coming in about perspectives on a deeper note the deepest of deepest note that best understood is from you then set had lived 105 years he fathered enosh set lived up and he fathered enosh 807 years and had other sons and daughters this all dead set were all days of set were nine one two years and he died in every lifetime we doesn't matter how long your human body lived but in every lifetime you really really lived and experienced a lot and experienced a lot of phases and in this phases in your lifetimes you ultimately live through every reality every possibility and through living through every reality and possibility you learn something 
this can also be a way of saying that suppose you are feeling some particular emotion and you've been really say upset or happy or doing something in particular be really fond of something and really say you're fond of reiki so you learn reiki for a while you just absorb it just do it for a long time maybe for like 12 lifetimes 13 lifetimes 12 years 13 years you've just done reiki 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 and suddenly after 13 years you just feel like going and doing say like language healing and you do that for 25 lifetimes 25 years and after those 25 lifetimes where you have lived many lifetimes there with that experience when you've done that on various people and with those like people you've lived many various lifetimes in those lifetimes you've lived through them and you've lived out of them and then you live to it and i ultimately you just probably proceed to die out from that phase and just proceed to another stage in life and that's the process that's been happening in your life in forever like in every context say you're reading a book and you really read that book and you really been obsessed with that book and you just went on reading that book went on reading that book went on reading that book and you just talked about that book so many times you just shared about that book so many times and in that context in that process of sharing and talking about that book you finally die out of your interest in that book this also happens to us a lot of times with songs we go like a song we go on hearing song we go on listening to that song and in very many lifetimes in very many memories the song has played an important role eventually the importance of the song dies out and we perhaps don't even listen to that song again and so with those song those memories also die out and that lifetime is over and then another lifetime comes another song comes which we obsess over and we feel through and life is goes on when kenan he lived 70 years he fathered mahalal laile kenan lived after he fathered mahalale 840 years and had another son and daughter this all days of kenan were 910 years and he died this is talking about another phase which came in and where there has been phases and lifetimes so there has been a phase of enosh and there has been a phase of set when set is taking care of enosh and loving enosh and enosh is growing up and that is one of the lifetime a uh, phase of life so we can say that it is your great grandfather who's adam and then your great grandfather gave birth to the generation of your grandfather it is your grandfather's lifetime that was there after your grandfather's lifetime came your came in your father's generation that perished for a while then died then came in your generation which is perishing for a while it will perish and then die and then similarly will come in another generation when mahalal lalal had lived 65 years blow over the earth and the waters sub subsided the fountains of the deep and windows of heavens were closed the rain from the heavens were restrained <laughs> so finally this is your father's generation and this is finally your generation when your generation is now your generation has lived for 65 years and already there is like so much of issues there is so much of pollution there is so much of congestion all around and there is water flow reduction and everything there are plant reduction there is birds going to extinction and that's already happening this is the time is now this is happening now we are where there is global warming going on there is restraints in resources happening because a generation has come to a point which finally calls for a new beginning at the end of 150 years the waters had abated and in the 7th month on the 70th 
seventeenth day of the month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat, and the waters continued to abate until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, and the tops of the mountains were seen. So finally, when there is like there was flood, there will be flood in. I mean, it is said that there might be a flood coming in, and there has been floods. Anyway, we have been seeing droughts, and coronavirus is one of the hugest thing that has happened after a lot of years. Like last time, in 1620 or 1720, I guess there was the same thing. Like a pandemic broke out, and again, a pandemic is breaking out. So now that There is a flood happening. There can be floods, and there has been re- many spiritual teachers, like this one even, she predicted that there can be a possibility that there will be flood this year. And I personally feel that September October time there is a chance that there may be tsunami. So this is kind. We can kind you know consider this is the time when the peak of the mountains, everything is kind of set in. that train that pain that energy has kind of surfaced it up all total and there can be floods coming in that can surface it up and even though that happens ultimately the mountain top will be seen that no matter what we are going through no matter what upheaval is there ultimately you will see that light of hope And at the end of forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent forth a raven. It went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. So finally, there is too much of rain happening, or either there can be too much of rain, or there can be tsunami. I mean, it can be like anything, literally. However, the turmoil comes in, but. with that flood coming in with that energy coming in a flood or a crisis or energy always brings in unity because a flood a flood literally, literally happen in chennai also if we talk about recent floods and it was like really like full of flood and energy that was 2016 vibration again so yeah floods energy was also there in the collective in the 2015 vibration and there has been many more things like floods like the forest fires and very many things that we have been seeing in the last few years of various climatic changes that we've been seeing and with all those climatic changes and again raven is very ominous for something dark coming and finally with the raven hovering to and fro when there was darkness hovering finally the darkness dries up and there was light there was earth then he had sent from forth a dove from from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground but the dove found no place to set her foot and she returned to him to the ark for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth this can also be said that a lot of time there is water break of karma wave of karma the wave of twin flames the wave is still going here and there. you are you are in this wave at this point in time in your life you are in the wave of life you are in processing in this wave you are processing in this cycle of karma and in the cycle of karma when there is a lot of top seater we upheaval turmoil going in your life even if there is a song of bird bird being sang you cannot really hear the song of the bird you will be lost in your upheaval you will be lost in your flood you will be lost in your turbulences and ups and downs and this turbulences and ups and downs will be your focus or in other words the corona the flood of corona that we see Our focus is here. Like, what will happen? Oh my God, what's going on? What will ultimately happen? Will the solution even come or not? In that state, people can't really focus on the soothing sensations, sensations of life. 
similarly tomorrow if there is a flood breakdown people will be focused on that the crisis moment they won't really be focused on anything else but the depression of that pain will surround them so he put out his hand and took her and brought her into the ark with him he waited another 7 days and again sent forth the dove out of the ark and the dove came back to him in the evening and behold in her mouth was a freshly plucked olive leaf so no one knew that the waters had subsided from the earth so this also olive leaf can be indicated as money wealth and dove can be a singer of god and the singer of god went out and wanted to sing wanted to sing nobody wanted to hear her sing and she just came back sadly that god nobody is hearing my song because there's so much of water there's so much of turmoil what should i be doing so god allowed the bird to rest in god and god allowed the dog to stay with him and the dove had fled back to him and rested there and when the dove was resting the dove was resting finally the god set him free when finally the god felt like it was time for the dove to fly and that day the dove came back with the food with the twig we were the dove who is going through a lot of upheavals in life and a lot of turmoil but you really are seeking for reaching out to god and getting the wealth of your life but you're lost in that turmoil and you just go back to god and god is protecting you and god is telling you that when the storm is over everything will be fine so in that storm god is protecting you and now that the storm goes away and subsides you get that success the song is heard then he waited another 7 days and sent for the dove and she did not return to him any more and again finally when we wait finally god waited with us and finally god releases you and finally you realize that oh my god i'm free from this i'm free from this storm i'm free from that so you do not need to go back to that cage god is always in you but you do not go need to go back and hide in a shelter because you finally free once you're free once you break free from the cage and the storm and fly away the storm does not come again the storm subsides once you have really freed yourself you can really fly high in 600 and first year in the first month and first day of the month the waters were dried off the earth and noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and behold the face of the ground was dry in the second month of the on the 27th day of the month the earth had dried out then god said to noah go out from the ark you and your wife and your sons and your sons wives with you bring out with you every living thing that is with you all flesh birds and animals every creeping thing that creeps on the earth that may swarm on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on earth so noah no went out and his sons and his wife and his sons wives with him every beast every creeping thing and every bird every thing that moves on earth went out of families from the ark then noah built an altar to lord and took some every clean animal and some every clean bird and offered burnt offering on the altar and when lord smelled the pleasing aroma lord said in his heart i'll never again curse the crown because of man for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth neither will i ever again strike down every living creature as i have done while the earth remain seed time and harvest cold and heat summer and winter day and night 
shall not be so there was god had cursed us because of our evil of the youth once we walked on our sins of the youth once we walked on our upheavals once we walked on our rebellious attributes and once we walked on everything that is evil in our heart everything really becomes clean and we have purified once you become clean and purified you never curse again the fear is that if i really heal and become a better person will i always experience joy and glory of course you will and you will never experience pain you will never experience that hurt but it is a sin that punishes our sin it is the sin within us that is embedded with the voice that has the power to punish us and the moment we reach a space moment we reach a state in life where we are no longer in a state we're no longer in a position where we we're living with the sins of our youth we're living with the temptations of our youth when we've gone past the temptations of our youth we've become clean and purified and cleansed in god and in that cleansed state in god there's no way that god shall curse us there's no way that god shall not feel one with us because we are one with our god in that state of purification because that state of purification the state it is so pure is but god and god blessed noah and his sons and said to them <coughs> that's my first sign like that's true like that's the sign from heaven again thank you god and god bless noah and his sons and said to them be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth the fear of fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of earth and upon every bird of heavens upon everything that creeps on ground and all fish of the sea into your hand they are delivered so the fear of again going back to there shall be in all of us and with that fear present in us we will always remember that what we want because what we ultimately fear is the dread we don't want the dread anymore we don't want the dread again when we realize that we don't want the dread again you will always have that fear in you that i don't want the dread again so with that fear being present in your heart in every living creature which does not want dread that fear actually elevated to become the survival con consciousness later leading to a lot of stuff but that fear which is there in us that very fear inside of us that very fear that is there in our presence that fear is what will let us hear the word of our conscience follow our conscience and know that we shall not do anything that is going to bring us dread to our conscience or we shall with the fear fear the lord or know the lord the lord's presence and knowing lord's presence we should not do something like cain killed abel uh so first thing again so that we have known is also that killing somebody is a crime it's considered as sin that's very practical and to know that of course he is somebody getting is that's a crime every moving into you every moving thing shall be food for you and as i gave you the green plants i give you everything Bible nowhere talks about us having vegan food. It clearly allows us that, including veganism, including non-veganism, everything can be consumed by man. But you shall not eat flesh 
with its life that is its blood you cannot really eat flesh with life like you cannot eat up a person who's alive this also says that you cannot suck up on a person's energy do we really eat animals only do we really slaughter animals only or do we sometimes even in life we end up slaughtering a living human being by sucking them out in their very much presence of flesh and blood when a person is breathing when a person is alive when a person is breathing we still suck the energy out of them we suck the blood out of them we suck the breath out of their life and the breath out of their life is sucked out of them and we just eat their blood out and we should not do that i was about to talk about this that do we really kill people physically or emotionally i was about to go to that go to that and then i was like okay, talk for that later let's read <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah so and for your life blood i will require a reckoning from every beast i will require it from a man from the his fellow man i will require reckoning for the life of man whoever sheds blood of man by man shall his blood be shed for god made man in his own image so he shall shed blood of people in various ways we shed blood of even a man who is shopping a goat uh, he has to give a lot of energy so as he is giving that energy to shed the blood off of it a lot of blood is also oozing out of him because even though he every day he is killing the thing so he has to create his conscience to that level while he is doing that exercise of killing a goat then he is taking that life of goat and is taking away that life of goat in that process of taking away that life of goat a lot of energy is also going and he is again getting swayed away from his conscience because he knows it is my work i have to do this this is my life if i don't do this i won't have the living so he has made himself used to that process but having to make himself used to that process his energy is also being shredded his juice is also being shredded and somewhere deep down there is a part of him which is also being crushed a part of his flesh which is also being crushed inside even though that is happening subconsciously and you be fruitful and multiply stay on earth and multiply in it then god said to noah and to his sons with him behold i establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you and with every living creature that is with you the birds the livestock and every beast on earth with you as many as it came out of the ark it is for every beast of earth so god is forming a covenant a bond with all of us god has a bond with all of us and god it is in god that we are one we are all one with god so this is god and we are all one with god so since you are one with god i am one with god i am you you are me we are all the children of god i establish my covenant with you and that shall never again that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of flood never again shall there be flood to destroy the earth and as you have formed this oneness with god as you have formed this covenant blood bond with god there will be no more of blood shedding or destruction happening nobody can come and crush you nobody can come and crush your joy nobody can come and crush your happiness nobody can come and crush your glory nobody can come and crush your happiness because you have become one with god and since you become one with god there is no way there will be again any more turmoil in your life and god said this is the sign of covenant 
that I make between me and you and every living thing that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in cloud and it shall be a sign of covenant between me and earth. When I bring clouds over earth and bow seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of flesh. And the waters shall never again become flood to destroy our flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on earth. We are all born with a contract with God. We are born with a covenant with God in sight. So this is the cloud in sight. And that is that arrow inside. The arrow that you feel right now as you tap into your heart space. Anybody watching this video, nothing to get scared. <laughs> but the, as you feel tap into your heart space at this point of time, you feel a sense of cloudness in an arrow. You should remember God. Every time you just wander, you remember God is with me. And very prominently and consciously, you will remember this feeling. Even in the silence, you feel that peace. And such is the power of God. Thank you, God, for the words I said. Thank you, God, for the words I said. Thank you, God, for the words I said. Thank you, God, for all twin flames. Thank you, God, for all twin flames and having me to me. Thank you, God, for all the love that you shared. Thank you, God, for everything. Thank you, God, for all the food. Thank you, God, for all the shelter. Thank you, God, for all the glory that we are getting here. Thank you, God, for charge of our heart. Thank you, for God, for this holistic union inside of us. Thank you, I love and like you. So I'll ask you all questions or any question that you all have. So I start with Samiksha. Hi. Hi. How was your experience? It was amazing. <laughs> How do you feel? I feel like mesmerized. Like, this is, you know, a feeling like, you know, blessing ka coming and feeling thankful and just really positive. <laughs> God, this is Thanks. Pramila, how do you feel? You're on mute, you're on mute. Yeah. Ah, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. See, wonderful. First and foremost, whenever one listens to the words of God, there's something else that happens in the brain, okay? That's one thing. And uh, the other few observations that I, you know, uh, made while you were reading is that there are so many things which are leading to one thing. Okay, which is this, that everything has happened earlier and it's, it's like history repeats itself. Okay, so whether you were speaking about uh, the tsunami, which could happen or what had happened hmm, or anything that has happened previously is repeating itself. Why is it? Because it's trying to teach us a lesson and then we don't, um, you know, make the most of it. Then uh, coming from making the most of it, the story you told about Adam and Eve's first uh, bonds, uh, Cain and Abel. So there's a very famous uh, writer by the name of Sir Jeffrey Archer, who went on to write a series of books called Cain and Abel, uh, picking up from this Cain and Abel and speaking about they were like two brothers and how over a period of 60 years, uh, they ended up fighting and this, that and all. So basically this, that you can, what is it? 
you can pick up a story and make so much money out of it that's one part of it but what is it left with us we need to take the essence and at the end of it it eventually leads to that one almighty who's trying to teach us everything in every possible way but sometimes we get so blinded by this that like samiksha said that there is so much positivism in all of what we read but there is a stark reality which we always kind of you know tend to keep aside but uh, then also this that you spoke about the ark and the mountain so there is this famous series of films called the indiana jones series and it's about an archaeologist who the first movie begins with this the raiders of the lost ark and how these people go in search of this very ark so cinema literature has always picked up from the ultimate verses from and the words of god so it's wonderful fantastic and i'm seriously i mean i can't thank you enough for uh, starting this again and again i'm going to keep saying it because i'm really really there's something else that's happening you know the wiring inside is <laughs> having yeah. something great happening in there thanks to god because i i mean i know how it came it just suddenly happened like yeah. i i today just for like i i didn't even know this for i was starting this i had no idea i was i would be starting this yeah. oh, thank you and love and light to all who are watching this and do like share subscribe and comment and meanwhile if you would like to be a part of us in the description box below you will find the details the fees is very nominal it's only 3333 rupees per month because this is my life purpose and this is what i like to do and love to do because i took this leap of faith only because i i know that okay this is what i really love to do and i should do it <laughs> so that's why i took the leap of faith so yeah like and i do feel extremely happy and not bothered about anything else right now other than this going quick flowing in the essence of my heart so yeah that is exactly how it feels to live your life purpose that's also something i can share right now and it's the most godly feeling all our to do a life purpose that's all i can something i feel like finding a life purpose is totally worth it like we all have a true life purpose thank you and i will like you see you all tomorrow yeah thank you thank you